Welcome to the Revenue Marketing Report powered by Caliber Mind. I'm your host, Kamala Thompson, and today I am joined by Jen Steele. Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm so excited. So nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. After being a CMO and CRO for a long time at lots of startups, I lost my mind and became a CEO. No, that's not true. That wasn't the losing the mind part. Um, I became CEO of Kissmetrics, uh, turned it around and sold it last year. And then I lost my mind and started my own company called um, SoundGTM, which is we're basically trying to build the Upwork for B2B pipeline and sales. And it is a startup. So we are in alpha right now, about to go into beta. I love it. And I, I love that you acknowledge that being CEO wasn't quite hard enough and you had to just go for the gold. I honestly didn't quite intend to do it this way, but um, fundamentally, I realized, so I actually got the technology from another uh, platform from one of my investors from Kissmetrics, who apparently liked what I did. And I didn't want to do it at first. And then I realized, like, I have all my friends in marketing and stuff like that dying for pipeline and revenue. Like, it is completely bonkers out there. You know, 2021, we could, like, manufacture money and then we couldn't buy a sale. And on the other side of the marketplace, there's, like, all these sales and marketing people who either don't trust anybody anymore with the W-2 ever or, like, need to pay a mortgage. And I realized that with some re-engineering uh, that I could help both sides help each other. And here we are. Never, ever thought I'd found a company in my life. Never thought. I thought being CEO, absolutely. Being turnaround CEO, absolutely. But um, never thought I'd be a founding CEO. So here we are. I'm excited for you. And I'm excited about today's topic because you have, like you mentioned in your introduction, a lot of different perspectives to pull from here. And our topic today is is your board trying to sabotage marketing? And are, is that too clickbaity or does that really exist? Well, I mean, the answer is yes. And so we're done with the podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're stuck with okay. me. You have to talk okay, more. okay. <laughs> um, I, but when you're sitting in the boardroom and you're the CMO, it sure as hell feels like the board is trying to sabotage marketing sometimes, doesn't it? Or they're trying to be like, why aren't we in the Super Bowl commercial? And um, it's like, because we're a $50 million a year company and nobody cares that we sell an ABM platform. You know, things like that are, uh, when you hear them in the boardroom, you're just like, are you setting me up to fail? Like, what's going on here? But yeah. Yeah. I think the struggle here. Yes, the, the words are probably a little too strong, um, but we've got a lot of people in the boardroom who don't have practical business experience. We have very few marketers in the boardroom. Yes, and we add that to how many founders have been in the boardroom before they're running their own board? Mm. Especially mm -hmm. when we talk about startups. I, like, let's set aside public boards because they're trying and they are staffed with business people. But of course, a publicly traded company is very, very different from a startup. And mm -hmm. we have tons and tons of startups. And I'm going to assume that you talked to tons and tons of startups. And I realized, and now I've ascertained it, like, hey, when I was a CMO sitting there thinking my startup CEO was a complete idiot, it was because I had presented to six different boards. And mm -hmm. he had presented to um, none before that one. <laughs> In fact, had never been an executive, had never been any of those things. And so like that actually, I wish I'd realized that a little bit earlier in my career because I probably should have given some people a bit more grace when mm. they, because when they don't know how to manage a board and they're, and the board are their investors. So it's like, they can fire them. There's like, there's so much power, so much power the board has over this poor CEO who just had a brilliant product idea and was trying to take it to market. The CEO barely understands marketing because, and now the, you're trying to ask the CEO that barely understands marketing to defend marketing to a board that also doesn't understand marketing because they're professional VCs or maybe they're former founders, but the chances are very, 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 very slim that any of them has spent any time in marketing. And of course you're going to feel sabotaged. I really like that call out that they don't necessarily have an, a lot of experience and they don't i have talked to a few people who've gone from CEO to board and they realized I can say no to some things, but I, I just have to have a really good reason. Mm -hmm. 
So when it comes to like, the board wants to see website metrics, social media following, that sort of thing, I feel like the marketer and the CEO need to be on the same page and be able to educate up. And if the board is asking for something as granular as social media metrics, something has gone wrong way further up. Because yeah. think about it. If they're grasping at metrics that we know barely matter, mm -hmm. then how dire is the situation in their minds? Yep. I agree with that 100%. The only time I've seen that asked is when something was going really wrong. And fortunately, I was not the CMO. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Just know to be a clear. lot of CMOs these days that are trying for the number two spot because they're like, I don't want to deal with that BS anymore. Yeah, a little buffer room is kind of nice. Yeah, I went the other direction. I went up instead of down. But still, it's the same thing. I don't know that you could pay me enough to be CMO anymore. I did enjoy being in the boardroom. It, it was a lot of pressure, but I noticed that if you know your data and you can prove you know your data and you're talking about the right points, so what was the result? What went right? What went wrong? And what are you changing? That's the story you need to tell. As long as you stick to that, usually it goes pretty well. If you have a data-driven board, yes. Yeah, yeah. I lucked out on that one. Yeah, I've I've been in companies that have like a CEO who cares more about PR mentions. And mm. then I'm trying to go to the board with numbers and he's like, yes, but go with pretty pictures. And I'm like, yes, that's not going to bother anybody like at all. So it's, it's a really tough, I think as a CMO, especially if you're not convinced whether your CEO and the board are even aligned, it's, it's really hard to know what to go to the board with. And I would say, and this feeds right back into when you know your numbers, like they don't actually care about marketing. They care about revenue. Yeah. And then insofar as it deals with revenue, they deal, they, they care about pipeline. So unless you can show that you're driving pipeline or that you're accelerating time to close or something that their tiny little brains can understand. Okay. I'm not, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> they, like it does take at least political connections and maybe some intelligence to get on a board. If you can't tie yourself to sales, you're going to have a hard time, but you also need to be flashy because they do know in the back of their little heads that PR and brand matter. Mm -hmm. They don't know how, <laughs> but so you've got folks that what they really care about is sales and pipeline and revenue. And then they think they can make a Pringles commercial, right? Cause they, they watch TV all the time. They know how to do marketing. And so if you only prove one or the other, then I actually think that's where we get into trouble with boards is that you don't show you can do the marketing as they consider marketing, which is basically brand or, or PR. And if you don't show that, then you're only halfway there and you may as well go answer to the CRO. Cause after all, all you're doing is pipeline revenue on the flip side. If you're only like doing flashy events and you know like spending all this time and money on brand and stuff like that, and you don't tie yourself to sales, then you are the first people to get cut because they don't see that it matters. And so just like marketing's a balance, like we have to put that balance in front of the board. You're right. You know, honestly, I was thinking of it from a couple of perspectives, one being they have a playbook that they've seen in B2B for 25 years and they just want to do that again. Doesn't That's work a anymore, very, but whatever. <laughs> right, right. Recency <laughs> bias is actually good in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get there, I think your point's really smart in that one, you have to check and see where your CEO is in terms of experience and relationship to the board. They want to control the narrative. Mm -hmm. So how you present is going to be closely tied to them. Right. For better or worse. Yeah. And ideally um, you can have that conversation. You can say, if you have a data-driven CEO who only wants to show the numbers, you can say, absolutely, here's the number slides, but I'm super proud of what the marketing team's done. Let's show some of it to the board. Plus it's, it's pretty, it's flashy. And some of them are going to expect us to, to look pretty and flashy. Yeah. Um, or or you have the opposite conversation, right? Yes, like, yes, absolutely super proud of what our brand has done, but I'm also super proud of my team's contributions to pipeline and revenue. 
And I'd really like them to see how sales and marketing are working together to make us more money. So we're going to get into that in a bit, but <laughs> curious how you would advise a CMO on your team. It's interesting. So I wouldn't want to be a CMO now because we can't control the market and we're often the <laughs> first to be blamed for lack of pipeline and bookings. Mm -hmm. How would you coach a CMO walking <laughs> Don't. No, sorry. I'm kidding. Yeah. Like I'm stumped <laughs> I'm because I don't know how to handle the situation well when you know there's, you know, either a lack of sales methodology, structure, rigor. Oof. You can't really point at them because you can only point at yeah. what you can control, right? Right. Yes. So, so this one's tough because mm -hmm. I think CMOs get into trouble for a lot of reasons. And I have done most of these. Just just to be fully, fully transparent, um, mm -hmm. there's the CMO that comes in and knows they're the subject matter expert and doesn't quite give the CEO what he or she says they need mm -hmm. um, because it's stupid in their minds, right? Like, it's like, why do you want that? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But, and sometimes it is dumb. Like, yeah. honestly... A lot of CEOs are not rational human beings or they heard something really cool on like some Saster podcast or something, right, that they expect you to come back with. But you can't fully ignore it. You can try to have the conversation around it, but sometimes there's just going to be stuff you've just got to do. Yeah. And so coming in and saying, I'm the subject matter and you're expert and you're an idiot doesn't always work. In fact, it never works. But on the other side, like overcorrecting for that, you become an order taker. You do exactly what the CEO says. And then the CEO in the back of his or her mind goes, why did I hire you? And so then they start ordering you to do stupid things. And if you never say, hey, how does this tie back to the metrics you need for your next funding round? If you never push back and said you're just kind of trying to deliver and deliver and deliver and deliver, you're going to burn out and your CEO is going to question, why did I hire this person? Because everything's just coming out of my brain. Every, any. And granted, I'm exaggerating here for effect. But it's still, these are, and you can't be either modality. You have to be both. You have to say, I'm coming in as a CMO. And this means that the CEO has probably hired me for one of two reasons. One is the CEO knows that they don't know this stuff and trusts me to do it. Or the CEO can't fit this in their schedule anymore and therefore needs someone to do it. Mm -hmm. And I need to figure out which of those it is. And quite frankly, it's probably a mix. So you need to say, what do you need to see? And stuff that doesn't make sense, you say, hey, I'm new here. This doesn't make sense to me, right? How does this tie back? And if they say, oh, it doesn't tie back, then it's great. Like, tell me why you think we need to do it. And then if it's something like, well, I hear that our, you know, our ICP really likes it. Awesome. I'm going to go out and interview a bunch of our ICP, which you should be doing anyhow as, mm -hmm. as the CMO. I'm going to listen to a bunch of sales calls, et cetera, and so on, and like give my recommendations around this, this thing, because maybe we should do more of it. Maybe we should do less of it. But like, let's find out together, because unfortunately, a lot of CEOs are only good as the last person they talk to. Yeah, but I like your recommendation like because playback tape, it's gold. Mm -hmm. It's gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, unless they're like, they've got some serious ego issues and really hate being proven wrong. Well, now it's time to look for a new job. What can we say? I could talk about this wrong. all day, Jen. The board. It is sabotaging us sometimes, but building an aligned business, that's our next topic. So excited to talk about it tomorrow. Listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to the Revenue Marketing Report. Please tell two friends, subscribe, download, whatever you can helps. And for those of you looking for more great content like this, check out caliberbine.com.